Hi, my name is Lindsay and I'm an Applications Engineer at Hawkridge Systems. Today we're going to be covering how to set up your stock material on the part that you're going to program inside of SolidWorks CAM. So we want to do this before we start programming because what we can actually do is simulate against the actual stock material and we can actually provide different tool paths based on where the stock is located. So to set up the stock, there's a couple different places that you can find this. We can go to the command manager and there's a stock manager option inside the SolidWorks CAM tab. And we've also got the option to right click on the stock manager itself in the tabs located in your design tree. And we can right click here and choose edit definition on the stock manager. So if we want, we can change the material. The material is actually linked to the speeds and feeds database. And if we want, we can choose from this list. This list can actually be changed inside of the actual technology database, but this is the material selection here. And then below that, you've got four different types for your stock selection. So the first one is the bounding box and the bounding box offset can be set down here so we can change the size of the actual bounding box. You'll see the overall size here is, is the stock size. So we can go ahead and use the arrows here and you'll notice that this is now adding material in the X direction. The axes that are located on the side here are from the actual SOLIDWORKS coordinate system that was used to create the part. So this is the only option inside of SOLIDWORKS CAM that takes into account the SOLIDWORKS coordinate system. So if you do want material in both directions, you're gonna use this little uniform button and it adds it on both sides. So if I want to add material to the top of this part, I'm going to add it in the Y direction. You'll notice here is the Y direction. In the coordinate system that we use for SOLIDWORKS CAM, we're going to place this as the Z direction for a two or three axis mill. So be sure that you're adding the material in the correct direction. So again, this is taking into account the SOLIDWORKS coordinate system. If I want to add material to the top, I can do that here. And then I can go and add some material to the Z direction. And that would actually be your X or Y direction in SOLIDWORKS CAM. So that's the bounding box option. The next option here is an extruded sketch. So we can actually take into account SOLIDWORKS sketches and use those as our stock material. So if I want to use the first boss extrude sketch that was used to create the part, I can just click on that sketch. So you'll notice the sketch goes in the first box here. I can choose where I want to offset that to, or I can actually choose an entity. So if I just choose this top face, then it comes up to that top face, or maybe I want this face instead. And you can also just offset it or give it an actual dimension. If I choose blind, I can actually just type in a dimension here and use that as my stock. And you can also reverse the direction. So that's the extruded sketch. And then you've also got an STL file option. So this comes in handy, especially if you're using the STL file leftover material selection inside of the SOLIDWORKS CAM simulation. So you can actually save out your simulation as the work in progress from a previous program and then use that as the stock material for your next program. And then the last option is an actual SOLIDWORKS part model. So we can go ahead and just select a part that's already been created, or you can actually use the current part and a different configuration of this part. I would select the coordinate system that I'm using for both parts, and then I would go ahead and select the configuration that I've made for the stock material. So in this case, I haven't created a configuration for this, so there's nothing in here. But if you do create another configuration inside of SOLIDWORKS, you can actually use that as your stock material. So that's a nice option for keeping all of your files inside of this one file. So you don't need to create a separate file for your stock. So in this case, we're just going to use the bounding box. So what I had set up in the beginning, and then I'm going to go ahead and choose OK. So once I've got that stock set up, you can hover over the stock manager and it should show you a preview of that stock. If I do want to edit that stock at any time, I can right click and choose edit definition, come back in and make the changes that I need. If I do have tool paths that are created and then I make changes to the stock material, I need to make sure that I regenerate those tool paths. So I would need to hit this generate tool path button in order to apply my new stock settings. 
So in today's video, we covered how to create the stock material on your part, as well as how to adjust the sizes and all of the different options inside the stock manager. Thanks for watching.